Someone once asked a journalist how rich Nelson Mandela was. The reply? I must confess I couldn't answer that question. They might not be exact figures and estimations, but one thing's for sure, the Mandela family is living the lux life. When Nelson Mandela passed away in 2013, he didn't own a lot. His net worth at the time was estimated to be $1 million. Back then, the exchange rate set at 10 rands 50 cents. If we compare that to President Cyril Ramaphosa, who is worth over 6 billion. No money. Well, how could he? Mandela spent 27 years in prison. Some say that almost three decades of being cut off from the world made Madiba kind of naive when it came to money. He wasn't concerned with wealth and luxury at all. Data cut his presidential salary when he came to power in 1994. He handed over a third of it to a children's fund as a regular donation. His homes in Johannesburg and his ancestral village of Kunu are grand by local standards, but hardly deluxe. And what he did have was divided among 40 beneficiaries after Madiba's passing. Firstly, Madiba made sure to look after his family, specifically the grandkids. His late son Mahato had four children, Mandla, Buso, Andile, and Ndaba. They received just over three million rands each. Tata's daughter, Pumla, had three children, Dumani, Tukwini, and Kweko. They received 100,000 rands each. Zenani Dlamini Mandela had four children, Zazizwe, Zamaswazi, Zintle, and Zazuko. They, too, received 100 grand each, as did Zinzi's children, Zoleka, Zondwani, Bambata, and Zuelabo. Madiba allocated a large amount of money to the children of his third wife, Grasha Michelle. Josina and Malengande each received 3 million rands. He also left 100 grand each to Samora Michelle's six children born from a previous marriage. Among the many beneficiaries, Mandela also left some cash for his former staff members, including were his longtime driver, Michael Maponya, his personal assistant, Zelda Lagrange, and Tokoma Vuso, who worked with Tata for 21 years. Each of these people got 50 grand. Lastly, Madiba left 100,000 rands each for Forte University, the University of Advertisrand, Kunu Secondary School, and Orlando West High School. And with the help of his trusted lawyer, Ishmael Ayob, Tata was able to set up at least 24 trusts for his family. Some of the trusts even owned expensive properties in some of Josie's upmarket neighborhoods. In 2013, Makaziwe Mandela lived in a 575 meter square house in Hyde Park. Did you know the house was actually owned by the Makaziwe M Trust? A property valuation at the time said the home was worth about 13.6 million rands. Although, to fully understand the Mandela family's wealth ain't that easy. That's mainly because of their network and trusts, and there's no public documentation with all the info. That being said, as Tata's clan has grown older, they've also been making names for themselves. His granddaughters Zaziwe and Zamaswazi had a reality show and launched a Mandela clothing range. Zoleka, on the other hand, was a writer and activist. Some sites claim she was worth between one and five million dollars. Yeah, hey. Zoleka's most notable works are her writing about her addictions, her 13-year-old granddaughter's death, and her personal battle with cancer. Zoleka's brother, Zondwa, is a seasoned businessman. He is the CEO and founder of the Mandela Global Brands. The company sells Madiba branded products. He is also the co-founder of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. His net worth is kept on the down low, but Zondwa did have some drama in his career. Back in 2015, Zondwa and his business partners were in court for Khrutfle mine charges. This isn't the first time Kulubuse Zuma and Zondwa Mandela will be in the dock. He was a director for Aurora Empowerment Systems, a company that managed the Khrutfle mine. After seven long years of investigations, he and his business partners were laid with a stack of charges. The charges included environmental damage to the mine area and using water unlawfully. The reports basically explained that while Aurora was in charge of the mine, the water sources became heavily polluted. Not an ideal work setting, huh? Eventually, the mine was forced to shut down. More than 5,000 people lost their jobs. Someone even wrote a book about the fiasco. You'll never guess the title, How to Steal a Gold Mine, The Aurora Story. And can you believe that up until now, the case was never settled? Speaking of grandsons, Mbuso Mandela also had some drama with the law. Mbuso is a professional brand builder. It's unclear how much he is worth, but remember his 3 million inheritance? Mbuso is considered the black sheep of his family for many reasons. In 2022, he was arrested for the possession of an unlicensed firearm and drugs. He was granted bail of 1,000 rands, which his brother Ndaba paid. Mbuso also got the side eye for being a deadbeat dad. Yikes. 
And then there's the older Buti. Ndaba is an author, mentor, spokesperson, entrepreneur, and political consultant. Talk about an impressive resume. Rumor has it, Ndaba is worth $5 million. That's over 90 million in local currency. And even though Ndaba might be considered the more responsible brother, he did have some money drama. I told myself when I grow up, I want to go to jail. In 2023, it was reported that BMW wanted to repossess Ndaba's 1 million rand car. This came after he missed some installments. The outstanding balance? Over 600,000 rands. And Ndaba's comment? I have already paid them. You can call BMW, he said. Meanwhile, Ndaba's aunt, Makaziwe, has been a director of at least 16 companies. Did you know she was a director for Nestle? And a shopping center in Kimberley, two railway engineering companies, and at least four companies that specialize in mineral exploration. Makaziwe's net worth isn't public info. We as a family cannot communicate in detail. But with a resume as impressive as hers, we bet she's worth quite a bit. Tata's other daughter, Zenani, has a special personality too. She's currently our Mzansi ambassador to South Korea. Before that, she was the South African ambassador to Argentina and Mauritius. Oh, and FYI, she's a princess. That's an official label, mate. A thing that I never thought I would see. Zenani met Prince Tumbumu Zidlamini of Swaziland while she was studying. And her net worth? Somewhere between one and five million dollars. Do you think Nelson Mandela's family is doing well to uphold his legacy? Share your thoughts in the comments. That's it for this episode of The Lux Life. Join us again next time when we'll be looking at another who's who. Like and subscribe. See ya.